Greetings, mortals! A capital day to y'all! In today's broadcast, I will be reviewing the concept of the ego. Within every living being exists this sense of centrality, this sense of a separate self, the feeling of being you. It is both an innate experience and a cultural one in the case of humans. Ever since birth, this process of reinforcing your separateness begins. As soon as you are born, you are already labeled separate, independent, by being granted a name to distinguish you from others. Our culture places a great emphasis on dividing things. Male, female, black from white. Where does your head begin and neck end? Is it here? Here? The only way to separate them is to cut the head off. Then you'll have a nice clean dividing line. How do you define yourself? Do you define yourself as your body? Is your hands you? If you amputate your hand, would you be any less you? Now, if you can remove your hand and you're still you, how much of your body can you remove? and still be you. Every atom in your body is replaced approximately every five years. Have you heard of the man with half a brain? It's a, it's a real thing. A beam fell on the poor sod's head. You can live without so many parts of your body, yet you can't live without air or the sun, or even rocks. You need rocks. What would you stand on? So, how are these any less you than your body? You see, a long time ago, we were all tricked by clerics and priests, convincing us that we have a personal soul. Something solely separate from the material world. Something foreign, not of this world. Something that wasn't born out of the world, but as something placed here on trial. You didn't come into this world. You came out of it. It is easy for you to see that this is true with plants, because they have roots. We do as well. It is not as apparent. I'd like you to consider this idea for a minute. I'm not trying to convince you on it in the idea of selling it to you. I just want you to play with its possibilities. See where it leads you. For you to exist, you require the sun and the earth, which in turn revolve around our Milky Way galaxy and then the rest of the universe into infinity. When you step back and embrace this broader perspective, you begin to see that your existence necessarily implies the whole rest of the cosmos. You feel yourself to be this skin-encapsulated ego. You begin from the center of some unseeable singularity and end where the hairs of your skin does. You can't actually have the center drop out of you. This phenomena is known as ego death, described as a complete loss of subjective self-identity. In Jungian psychology, the synonymous term psychic death is used, which refers to a fundamental transformation of the psyche. 
It results in the profound experience that although one is not unconscious, there is no longer an I experiencing current sensory input. There is just the input as it is by itself. You see through the illusion of a separate personal self inside an external world that is not you. And you begin to feel autonomous with the external world acting as one. What age are you? When were you born? At conception? At partition? Or when you were just an evil gleam in your father's eye? All of human history had to occur for you to be here. And, in turn, the entire history of the universe as well. Observing causality, you had to go from a sperm to a baby to an adult. Your parents had to meet for you to be here as well. Following events back in time makes you, well, at least as old as the age of the observable universe. That's pretty old. I'm sorry I wasn't around to celebrate your 13 billion birthday. But you don't look a day over 10 billion. I assure you. You are a process of your age. You have the knowledge of those who came before you. The thoughts of those you call others. To even communicate right now. The words of our ancestors. In hearing me speak, I become part of you. My thoughts flowing through you like water filling an empty vessel. Through small mouth noises, I am able to communicate something to you that previously was only available inside the confines of my own mind. By listening to me, you adopt a part of me inside of you. You may not accept reincarnation as a cold hard fact, but if you take this perspective, everyone is you and you are likewise everyone else. We imagine death to be like going to sleep and never waking up, but think about what it was like being born. Being born is like waking up, never having gone to sleep. There is this sense of centrality in every being that exists. Every being is I, just as you are. And there are always eyes in this sense. This I is always you. We know that when people die, other people are born. Reincarnation is the reincarnation of I. The experience of being I goes on. Just like a melody can be played by several different artists, but it's still the same tune. You can think of it this way. Take the University of Oxford. The staff constantly keeps changing, and the old buildings are torn down, new ones are built. But it is still the University of Oxford. The melody goes on. Now, you don't remember having been here before, at least not in the ordinary sense. But if you think carefully, in hearing this, I might just be reminding you of who you really are. Acting where your memory seems to fail you. You are the universe. You're the whole process. 
you're what the whole process is doing right now. Now Buddhists figured this out a long time ago. We are just now catching up here in the industrial world. They have this concept of karma, which means action or deed. And what you are is karma, action. Now, I will be discussing the topic of karma further in a different episode. But that is all for today. Stay safe out there, mortals. Rate, comment, like and subscribe. And donate to my Patreon. Thank you for listening. See you next time, mortal. Remember to hit that bell button to stay notified. Subscribe for more. Give it a like if you enjoyed it. And please feel free to share it. If you want to support my work, you can find me on Patreon at Library of Gnosis. You can find me on YouTube, Facebook, and BitChute at Library of Gnosis. The audio versions of my broadcasts are available on Spotify or wherever you get your podcast at Library of Gnosis. Music is produced by Coda from Coded.music.